Rachel was only a month old when her real father died. She wasn't old enough to watch TV that week in November 1963, the week President Kennedy was shot dead in Dallas. She couldn't recognize her daddy on the screen when Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for the crime, the weekend he was shot dead on national television. I don't want to know Lee Harvey Oswald, the, the accused assassin. I want to know Lee Harvey Oswald, the father, my father. But Rachel did attend her father's funeral. That's her in her grandmother's arms when America buried Lee Harvey Oswald without a single tear. For 28 years, she has remained silent until now. Speaking with Kennedy historian David Lipton, author of a forthcoming book about her father, Rachel tells how her mother and stepfather sheltered her from the legacy of Lee Harvey Oswald. Growing up out in the country, we were away from everything. We were away from the city, we were away from the public eye. She just did not want us to come in contact with anything that would maybe remind us or be a part of this kind of thing that they were trying to keep us away from. We'd heard the Oswald name in the house, but he was like a mystery man. We knew that this name would always uh, instill pain or grief or, up, or would make my mother upset or upset the house with this name, this name. Her mother and stepdad did what they could to give Rachel as normal a life as possible, but they couldn't hide. We would have the, the local eyewitness news teams follow us to school. And when Rachel arrived at school, she was the only girl in class whose daddy's name appeared in the history book. Everything written then, or at least everything I was exposed to or heard about, never talked about innocence, so I always thought that, that he did it. As she grew into womanhood, Rachel left her small town and ventured into the big city to go to college. But wherever she went, she felt like a marked woman, reluctant to reveal her true name. Audrey Marina Rachel Oswald Porter. However, I only go by Porter as a safety measure. And she soon found the consequences of letting people know that her father was one of the most infamous men of our time. I've had attention from men when I did not have attention from them until they knew who I was. And suddenly I have a lot of attention from men. I, I, I can think of one man in particular, or two men in particular, who think that I'm just terrific only because I'm Lee Harvey Oswald's daughter. They think that I have a connection with a famous person. And it's like they have, it's like their brush with fame, I think. Oh, I see. Which, is, which is a complete turnoff to me. But it was only recently that Rachel was faced with the most ironic twist of all. It took a lifetime for Rachel to come to grips with the belief that her father, Lee Harvey Oswald, was the man who killed President Kennedy. But then, after years of reading and hearing all the theories, she came to the belief that her father was not an assassin, but a victim framed for the crime of the century. My whole outlook on life has changed just by hearing that, that there's evidence that completely exonerates this man of the crime of killing the president. Um, now, I'm, I'm not saying that he is not uh, involved. I believe he's involved, or else why would he be there? But I don't know. I really believe, though, that he didn't kill the president. And my whole life has been plagued by this idea that my father is, a, is the murderer of one of the most loved persons in the world. And, and if, I, if, that, if he's not responsible for that, then that means that a great part of the burden that I have to carry is gone. And interestingly, she feels a kinship to the Kennedy family. Well, I wonder, come November, I, I wonder how painful it is for them. I wonder how painful it is for them to see their father gunned down. And I wonder if they wonder how painful it is for me to see my father gunned down. Rachel still lives in Texas. She's studying to be a nurse. She's still single and looks forward to getting married and leading a normal life. If you could tell your father one thing, what would it be? I would say, how could you leave your wife and your two kids to carry this burden? Um, until now, you've not spoken out. How come? Well, you know, for 25 years, uh, it was a subject that we didn't talk about that much around the house. Mom really tried to keep us sheltered. And, and until recently, there hasn't been a reason that I've needed to come forward, but really, now I'm really concerned about books and articles that are coming out call, saying it's, the case is closed and the case is not closed. There's still a lot of information that's out there that we'd like to get for me and my family. I assume you're, I assume you're alluding to the uh, Posner, Posner book yesterday that we, we had on this mm -hmm. program and talked about. It's a book called Case Closed mm -hmm. that, that claims to be the definitive work mm -hmm. and, and says that your dad killed JFK. You don't think right, so. Right. 
Well, I don't think there can be a definitive work on the assassination, whether it's pro-war commission or anti-war commission, without all the information released. There's still information in files, there's still information in private files, such as life, that uh, we need to have all the pieces to the puzzle before any definitive work can be completed. I'm very excited about anybody that does research, Mr. Posner or other researchers, anybody that's doing research to try to find out the truth. I just want to know what really happened in November 1963. We're going to get to that in a little bit. First of all, tell, tell me what it's, what it's been like. How much of a, of a burden has the name been over well, the Well, you know, I don't like to be morose. I don't think it's, a, it, it's been a burden. I mean, growing up, it was, it was something that was always there. We were, I was June Oswald. When we would go to the stores, there would always be the pokes, and, oh, that's Maureen Oswald. Or, or uh, when we went to the prom, the National Enquirer pulled up into the driveway. My mother thought it was uh, the kids' parents taking pictures, and it was the National Enquirer. We were always surrounded by press, people always coming around November, calling all the time. It was just part of my life growing up. What did your mom tell you about your dad? As you were growing up, obviously you were you were you were very young when he was killed. Um, what'd your mom tell you? Well, we didn't talk about it, as I said, much when I was growing up. We talked about her time with Lee in Russia, is very happy. And uh, later on, I found out that he he wasn't such a great husband. You know, he he wasn't the model husband. Beat mom didn't really provide well for the family and the and the children. Um, but it was a hushed subject until just very recently around the house. Yeah. Um, so why now? Why have you come out now and said, okay, you know what, I've, mm -hmm. I've kept my identity quiet for mm -hmm. long enough now. I'm because we want to know. We want to know what happened in November 1963. And I don't want the case to be closed. I want all the records released. JFK, Oliver Stone, a lot of people have done a lot of work trying to make sure that all, the public, everyone in the United States has all the information available. And I want to make sure that that happens. And if I can be a conduit to making sure that happens because I have the name Oswald, then I want to do that. I don't, you know, if, if, if all the facts are laid out and they say Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone assassin and he did it, I, I will accept that. If they come out and say he was a patsy as he stated on television at, following his arrest, then, then that'll, that, I'll accept that. I'll accept whatever the truth sure. is. We want the truth. Nobody really knows exactly what happened, yet we all believe something. Right. Who do you think killed the president? Well, I think it's inappropriate for me to comment because I have a personal interest in the case. If I said Lee had nothing to do with it, it would be pushed off as, well, that's the daughter of Lee. That's what she said. If I said, oh, he, he did it, then it would be blasted all over the papers. June Oswald says Lee did it. So I really don't want to get into that debate. I'm not a technical expert. I, I, I've done my own reading and have my own opinions, but I'm not uh, somebody out there looking at the facts every day like a lot of people are doing. Um, and, and I respect their, what they're trying to do. As, as you know, I suspect you know, when your mother an initially spoke to the, um, to the Warren Commission in, in 1963 about your father, she said in part, I think he wanted to get into the newspaper so that he would be known. It didn't matter to him who he killed. Mm -hmm. How do you view that statement? Well, Mom, since the time, since all that time, now you have to remember she was 22 years old, had two young daughters, did not speak the language, was being bombarded daily and hourly and by the minute with, with CIA, FBI constantly surrounding her reporters. She said a lot of things that she says were misquoted, were misstated, and uh, now ha has said, no, that's not how she felt. You know, when she said, the information before me tells me that my husband did it, she met, that's all that she'd been told. She came from a society where she believed that the government, and we all believed in 1963 that the government never lied to us. At that time, of course, I was a baby, but we were a naive nation. Well, since then, we've had Watergate. We've had other things in our history that have showed us, gosh, the government doesn't always tell us the truth. So we want to know what the truth is. Your mom, your mom clearly seems to have changed her mind. You no doubt saw her appearance on, on NBC last week when she essentially professed your father's innocence. Right. Let, me, let me roll that clip for a second. Well, he definitely did not fire uh, the shot according to all the evidence that I have right now. But even if you don't have the evidence, uh, at the beginning, like in 1963, you cannot come to the conclusion that he is a guilty party. Is your mother privy to any evidence that you're aware of that, that makes her so, so certain that, that Lee Harvey Oswald didn't fire a shot? Yeah, well, I don't think it's any secret evidence. I think it's all out there. I think it's all in different books, and I think it's at the JFK Assassination Center and, uh, and archives. Uh, I think there is enough circumstantial and specific information and new technology that we can do that, that 
that does cast serious doubts upon the findings of the Ward Commission report at a minimum. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into all the various theories with you. I mean, I, I, and, and I don't think I could debate them. No, and, and nor should you be expected to. But in fairness, I've got to tell you that that case closed. Um, Posner basically did all of that and had computer analysis done of where the shots came from, et cetera, et cetera, and came up to the conclusion that that Lee Harvey Oswald did it. But but let's proceed. Um, well, now I've, in, I have looked at sections and talked with Posner, and I think that there are some questions about okay. some things. He so, said. to your mind, it's still not the definitive. No, it's absolutely okay. not. Back in April, you sent a letter to uh, President Clinton. Yes, I did. Basically, asking for his help in uh, in getting to the bottom of all of this. W what exactly do you want him to do? All I want him to do is complete the work that President Bush started at the end of his term and appoint the committee as stated in the law that is necessary to review the records that have not been released. The records that public agencies still feel have confidential or national security issues have not been released. Now, my question is, what kind of national security issues do we have 30 years later? The Cold War is over. I, I want that committee of independent uh, citizens appointed so that they can review the records and everything can be released. Look, I want the questions answered. I just want it to be, for me and my family and my children, I want the questions answered now. I don't want to go on like this for 30 more years. What kind of a response have you yet gotten from the White House? I've gotten no response from the White House related to appointing the committee. You also, um, I understand, want them to release uh, some personal effects that were seized 30 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, they have responded to that at the time, a, a year after, or two after the assassination, they, they um, passed a law in Congress that actually deeded over all our personal belongings to the government. The government now owns my birth certificate, fo family photos. I have nothing of Lee's. I couldn't even get a passport because I didn't have my original documentation, my original birth certificate. The original passport leak came over. You know, I went to the passport's office and said, y'all have it. It's in the National Archives, but that wasn't good enough. So. So, you know, I think that we have a right to some of the personal effects that have nothing to do with the Warren Commission or the assassination um, research. And what are the people in archives telling you about getting that back? They, they've just basically quoted the law and have said no. I mean, I'm looking at, uh, we have the documents from the uh, police department city of Dallas dated uh, November 26, 63, mm -hmm. at, at, at the various things that they picked up. I mean, a lot of this is... is uh, I, I, I shouldn't say meaningless, but it seems rather trivial stuff. Map of Russia, map of the world, mm -hmm. um, notebook in English, and no admittance sign, etc., etc. That's not the kind of stuff you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Well, I, would, I have no personal effects of Lee. I have nothing from my childhood. Um, there are some things from Russia that we would like, you know. Um, I think that we have the right to, to get our personal effects, clothing, things like that. You know, anything that really may have uh, the gun, I'm not asking for the gun. We would like the opportunity to maybe negotiate with the government for a few of those personal family items to pass on. Um, and, th and that's it. There's really, there's really nothing clandestine about it. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, if somebody came in to your home and confiscated all your belongings and mm -hmm. said now they belong to the government, you'd have a problem with that too. Sure. Probably. Um, we know very little about you. We are, we are obviously honoring your request that we reveal nothing of your personal life. You traveled here under an alias. We asked our security people um, to assist you. How difficult now that you've been on national television is it going to um, be? Is it gonna be? Yeah. Really, that, uh, I, uh, I guess my concern is more for my children. And uh, there are a few, few people out there that we've been in contact with as I was growing up that um, are obsessed with the assassination, obsessed with my family, obsessed with anything related to Oswald. And as much as possible, I'd like to, to stay away from that. Obviously, a lot of neighbors and, and uh, co-workers are suddenly going to know who I am. And that's okay. I'm prepared to accept that responsibility as long as, as there's a benefit to it, and, and, and the benefit being releasing all the records. But um, I, I realize that there's going to suddenly, I'm not going to have all my privacy that I had yeah. at the time. Is, is it realistic, June, to think that the question of, of who shot JFK will ever be resolved or, 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 or I could ever I, clear your father of of either outright guilt or some complicity. Is that realistic? Um, I think it's idealistic. Um, I don't know that, that all the information is even available for us to cl close the case. I would like to get rid of some of the theories. And in my mind, if, if, only, if, if it'll only satisfy my mother, my sister and I, if we can get closure in our mind about it, I still don't have it. I still don't have the answer, mm -hmm. even just for me personally in my mind, about Lee's involvement, if there was any, or or not. So, you know, it's a personal thing with me, and, it, and, it's, a, and it's an American thing with the public. The public, uh, uh, the polls, 80 percent of the public s still doesn't believe that Lee Harvey Oswald was a lone assassin. The public wants to know the answer to this question as well as me.